everybody, this is Jim, and uh, what I want to talk about here is how to box in a frame. Now, uh, if you've been keeping up on my videos, you'll have noticed that I was talking about boxing in the frame in some places. So, I've done some up front, right up there. I did some right here, uh, just to help stiffen up uh, the frame in front of the... Um, it's kind of above the transmission support, but I don't want to box in every place. There are certain places I want to have access to, and... Um, I'm going to put one here, and I really want to put one back here because it's behind where the cab is going to mount. You can see the cab mount is right there. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, so I'm going to box in this section in the rear. Now, I'm going to show you how I do it, and uh, I'm sure that there are going to people, be people who would disagree with me because, you know, this is auto work, and there's always people with different opinions on this stuff. But I'm going to show you how I go about doing it, and you can decide whether or not you want to follow that or not. It's completely up to you. So here's how I go about doing this. I like to take a piece of cardboard stock. Now, this is not corrugated, as you can see. I'm not fond of corrugated for this. I find it a little unwieldy and a little hard to work with. I like this real flat stuff. You can get this a lot of different places. Uh, I get it on pallets. A lot of times a pallet will come with this cardboard on top of it to protect whatever's sitting on top of the pallet from the wood. But basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to position it here where I want to put my piece of metal. And then what I'll do is I can go around with a hammer and basically trace with the hammer. Now, always be careful. Uh, you don't get any extra points for hitting fingers, which probably goes without saying. And, you know, I may not get every single spot, but I'm going to get pretty close. And without moving the cardboard, I'll move my hand down. All right. Now, that is not a perfect mark, but, you know, you got to admit, it's a pretty clear marking. And so all I'm going to do then is once I have that, now I'm just going to move to a good old-fashioned pair of scissors. So let me move you over here. And uh, I just take my shears, and I would just cut on this line right here. And I have to admit, I'm looking at the video screen, and as I'm looking at it, it is easier to see this mark in person than it is on the camera. But there you go. You can see the line right here. You can see it turns and goes here, comes back this way. And I would cut that out, and I would get this. This is a piece I've already prepared. You can see it is the shape of that. Now it's backwards, of course. So let's take this back over here. And you'll see, as I hold this in place, that it fits more or less exactly right. Now see, the template making with the hammer is going to get you 90% there. Then you cut it out with the pair of scissors, and you just trim it to make sure it's exactly right. It's not hard. If it's a little thick, you just, you know, cut a little bit more off. Cut it a little wide, you're always better off. It's easier to remove material than it is to put it back on. So now i got this a perfect fit. Hold itself in place. So I take that to my steel stock, and I trace it out, and then I just take a disc cutter on my grinder, just a cutting disc rather, and my uh, angle grinder, and I cut out this piece. Now, it's true, again, different opinion, you could use a plasma cutter for that. I just find it's real easy for a plasma cutter to get out of control. You can take a little bit too much material off real quick and easy with a plasma cutter. And so it's just easier for me to have a little more control with that cutting disc on my grinder. But that bad boy fits right in place. I've got a little bit of a seam all the way around, a little bit of a split, a little bit of an opening, and that's really what you want. Uh, I have found for welding because it allows for better penetration. The weld can get right down inside to there and you can melt the steel together just that little bit better by having that little gap. And now I've got that all the way around. It's holding itself in place and it's ready to go. And so all I got to do now is just hit this with the angle grinder with a with a grinding wheel this time. I'm going to clean up the edge of the frame. I'm going to clean up the edge of the metal. Actually, I'll clean that whole piece off and clean I'll be able to weld this on all three sides simple and effective. That's the way I like to do it. Now, again, different opinions. You may find there's a different way to do it, but that's the way I recommend it. It's going to be really quick and easy, and uh, it's going to look great. It's going to be real strong. It's going to do the job. Hey, you guys have a great one. Be safe out there. Take it easy. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Take care. Whoa!
I won't be 